Hello and welcome back everybody, Slim Slam and the Bandwagon fan at it again for your week 13 NFL review show. I'm Slim, he's Slam and to my left, that is the Bandwagon fan. As always, proudly brought to you by the Jersey Cartel. Boys, how are we? East, East, East. NFC East, please. Look, look at you come around. It's coming on. What, a, oh, weird, what yeah. a weird division. I, I picked the um the NFC East for my game of the week two weeks ago and I get mocked. And now all of a sudden everyone's all over it. They oh. think it's fantastic. Yeah. It's come alive out of nowhere. Yeah, and we love it on the show here. It's been yeah. producing content all year. <laughs> that's what Normally want. a bit of comical content. Yeah. It's, real now, you know, it's making some noise. I love it. I love it. And obviously the Washington football team and the, um, the Giants are <laughs> primarily responsible for that. On the same, um, well, the flip of that coin, I guess, you got the Cowboys not going along too well. they got the Ravens, right. obviously, tomorrow. Mm. And then um, the Eagles, which are going to be a fun little topic to talk yeah. about later on. Um, with the Eagles, just quickly, the Jersey Cartel, just a big shout out to him. He's going under the knife on Thursday to have a, um, mm. a nasty tumor on his bowel removed. So all the best to the big yeah. guy. Um, hopefully, we'll have plenty of good content good out there for you to sit in bed and watch. Mm. And, you know, hopefully don't enjoy yourself too much, mate. But, you know. Yeah. Get well soon, and we'll be um, hopefully right for the Super Bowl. We'll have a few Budweisers and, and celebrate your good health. So all the best with that, my friend. Absolutely. Now, well said, Blaz. Thanks, mate. That's what I, that's what well I do. Said. That's why you're here. That's what I do, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Eugene Taft. I mean, obviously, it's not the kind of news I like to convey, but no. you know, if you have to do it, you have to do it well. Mm. Schnazzy, good call, bad call, my friend, now, tonight. this is the type of news that I like to convey. <laughs> yes, it is. You do well. Good call, bad call, straight into it. Yep. Greg yep. Williams is the unluckiest man in football. Yep. So for you, for those of you who do not know, yep. Greg Williams is the Jets' defensive coordinator who schemed up that last play, yep. which... Jets fans loved. Yes, it's yeah. a zero blitz against Henry Ruggs, who's up there with the quickest guys in football. The, mm. the primary deep threat when you need 50 yards and a touchdown to win the game as time expires. Yeah, it's a puzzling decision, Blaze. I'd no, put it that way. Yeah. I'd put it that way. Um, but I would be thinking that all of those inside the Jets organization were pretty wrapped when they saw that go over his head exactly. and go for six. Yeah, and that's why it's a... Thought they would have gone inside, shook hands and said, uh, well done. It's a hard one to say good call or bad call too because it, it's almost in line with the philosophy of the team this yeah, year to 100%. like it's chuck it. With killed that. two birds with one stone. Yeah, mm. they still in the running for number one pick. Yep. They've still got the number one pick and they've got rid of got to get rid of a horrible defensive coordinator. Yeah. So, mind you, the um the King Dingling still sits atop the throne. Yeah. yeah. How has he survived? <laughs> Sorry. How has he survived? I've got, I've got no idea. So, I I think that's that's a strong 50-50 He's for me. He's got some there, dirty Shazi. photos of someone in that organization, doesn't you reckon? he? Yeah. yeah. Incriminating evidence for yeah. sure. Something going on because, yeah, you, you can't in good conscience keep your job with the body of work that he's amassed over the last yeah. few years. It's a, yeah. it's a bit of a joke. A bit of a mockery of the, end why, of the AFC East. It's why it's a well-known fact they're tanking. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to run the risk of getting an interim head coach in who's going to try. Well, as we always know, that they, they sparks a result. It sparks yeah. <laughs> energy, and the Jets are that close. They've lost a couple. Maybe of they're just now. maybe they're just waiting for the end of the year. Mm. Go out, fire Gase right as the year ends, and then hire Darbo Sweeney mm. and bring in Trevor with him. Yeah, well, Jeez. the Clemson Jets. That's making money moves. Yeah. That is making money. <laughs> that moves. would be money Speaking moves. Speaking of making money moves, yes. Anthony Lynn is the next coach on the chopping block. Oh, I've cool, been flagging cool. this for ages, Schnars. This is a good call. I'm over it. I don't have anything personal against Anthony Lynn. Mm -hmm. yeah, although you have said this for three weeks, so I it's starting. It's feeling a bit. Personal. I'm just leading a campaign mm. because I think that you've you got, definitely are. You've got your franchise quarterback has landed in your lap with Justin Herbert. He's probably exceeding expectations in all 100%. honesty. You've got an unbelievable roster in terms of names and mm. talent. And for some reason, you cannot get a result. And this week, it's not like you don't get a result. Mm. You go out and you're at home to the Patriots who are up and down like crazy oh, anyway with yeah. no real offensive weapons. A Cam Newton that's kind of like... hit for six. <laughs> just absolutely hit for six. What was it in the end? 45, 45 nothing. 45 zero. nothing. Mm. Not even a field goal. Was Anthony yeah. Lynn... Oh, this might be a question for you, Slam. But was Anthony Lynn ever at Atlanta? Uh, not that I believe, no. Because he's got to have learned that somewhere. That's, That's it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some characteristics getting carried oh, over. I mean, like Anthony Lynn, I think your time's definitely come. You and the next one's Matt Nagy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're um, the two hot seats left. We are left. firmly off those. And that will make it five coaches done this yep. year, which will be a record. We ran the in sums, the didn't we? Yep. A record in the noughties. Uh, we haven't checked back into Beyond the nineties and the eighties, but... Previously, it was like four in 2005. Was, yes, correct. And now, wow. potentially five coaches in the 2020 COVID season. So, occasionally, me and Shanaz do do our own research. I was just thinking. <laughs> Good Lord, <laughs> yeah, what's we happened sat here? down and had a look at that one. But yeah, I think you're a red hot shot here for that um, record to be broken. I think the Bears' job is untenable moving forward, I wouldn't have thought. Mm. And that charges, I mean, if I... Well, not, and what about the Cowboys? 
And well, the Cowboys job, potentially. It just depends think, on Jerry's pride, I guess. I don't feel like he's ready to fall on his sword yet. Yeah. They That's might only win three games. I know, but he's still not... They might ride that off on Dak's leg. Yeah. Oh. It's a big uh, ride-off, I know. It still but... wasn't going well before. No, of course that, not. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it's a bit of sugar to throw on top. You know, yeah. sugar coated, not as bad as it could have been. Yeah. Yes, but I don't know. I don't like it. it might I don't like him. it either. It might buy him a summer, and then maybe yeah. two games to start next year, and then if it's still... Oh, I don't care. Up, I'm more than happy to for them to waste another year. 100%. Yeah. Anytime the Cowboys suck, is funny. So. I wonder if they get Garrett back. They'd be cr- oh, they, they're, they're crying out for oh, eight Garrett's right on the Speaking of the Garrett, Giants roster yeah. as well. Yes. Oh, no. Speaking of Garrett, and this yeah. is a good cool bear cool right up your alley again. Yeah. Okay. The NFC East is the most entertaining conference in football right it, now. Well, so it, divisions. Conference. It's got a great narrative to it. Now, yes. the narrative is evolving from absolute laughingstock mockery of the league. How can a team here end up playing playoffs? To the point where now the team that might win the NFC East might not even have the worst record that plays playoff football. Nah, they will. 100%. They definitely sure. will. Yeah. What about the Giants? Nah. Nah. They'll have the worst record. Okay. Well, maybe that Confident. might that might be a touch of a stretch. If they won't, Blaze, I I, I don't know what I'll do. Yeah. I won't be able to get out of bed in the morning. Oh, Jesus. It's just, but they're looking they're looking good. The Giants' defense is unreal. Yeah. Mm. They are, and, so and imagine if they still had that top defenses, 10 offense. Hmm. The Washington. Yeah, the and that's, come, that's come to play. Yep, Their absolutely. defenses have both stood up big time. And off the back of a short week, so we'll touch on it later, but the Seahawks struggled. Yeah, mm. absolutely. They now, definitely did. One person or one team who's going to be incredibly happy with the uh, the football team's efforts this week. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it might stretch stretch your minds a bit. Yep. <laughs> but it's the 72 Dolphins team. Okay, oh, yeah. Right. The um, undefeated. Last yeah, undefeated Dolphins. team. So The only undefeated the team. The only undefeated yeah. team. Yeah. <laughs> 1972 Dolphins went 14-0 and 0 that year. Yeah. yeah. Steelers? Not your year, mate. No, close, no. but no cigar. And I would like to raise a question with regards to a um, passing play on fourth and one in the last quarter there. Yeah, um, puzzles. You, th- you throw a slant and go to a pretty much unnamed wide receiver who mm. just bobbles it and drops it and then you cough up going the other way. I think, um, you know... Maybe a little bit of arrogance snuck into the Steelers mm, organization. Potentially, with that I would have thought. I don't have any issue with the call to throw rather than run because they could not run the ball yeah, all day so. on yeah. uh, Washington. But I mean, yeah, would you not just kick it away? They're in, they're in danger here. The Steelers are falling off the bit of the cliff a bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They're forming against a depleted Raven side. Yeah, was mm-hmm. not great. Their form against Washington wasn't that great no. either. Not at all. Their run game is just died. Yeah. Their defense, they're a bit injury prone. Yeah, they've, so got, they've got injuries there everywhere. The confidence that we have is probably going to be reflected in the Elite Eight this week. Yeah. But the Chiefs, yeah. although they've scraped through this week, mm. they've probably taken leaps ahead of the Steelers. I would have thought so. But the virtue yeah. of not doing much. The interesting honest. thing yeah. there with the uh, Steelers is that the Bills are now two games behind them and they actually play each other this weekend. The Steelers, I think, also have to play the Browns and the Colts to end the year. Yes, that's correct. So if they don't, if they yeah, don't, they're true. shaping up pretty quick. They won't even get the number two seed. Mm. Mm. Well, it's only in Philadelphia any- oh, Sorry, Pittsburgh anymore. <laughs> yes. Always only in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, you got, you got, got your cool. You got your references crossed up a little bit. That's all right. Same state though. Yeah. Yeah. True. Pennsylvania. True. Yeah. And trust you to get in, involved with the geography side. Of it, Loves right? it. Yep. Yeah. Is that all you got for me tonight, Shnazi? Yeah, that, that's it. I reckon. Yeah. We'll save the rest. Yeah. Talk yeah. about the teams, but that's all we got. These narratives are starting to obviously unfold. Um quite well as we approach playoffs now mm. as we you know the tail end of the season and whatnot um one of the big storylines i guess coming I think, out of this week sorry before we even yeah, get into it week 13 has got to be in the best week of football oh so there was year upsets all over the place anyone yeah. who loves football yeah. yeah 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 it's just created that many as you said stories and narratives and some of the results some of the scores are just mind-boggling yeah, yeah. and it's set up a really interesting run home we've discussed and it off air obviously is, is maybe being the weirdest week we've oh, seen. Oh, it's year. one of the strangest I can remember. Yeah, quite unusual. Yeah. Um, some real big upsets and some, you know, we mentioned last week, I'm going to get straight into the first game that we've got tonight. The Browns needed that marquee win. Yeah. I think they had that, you know, Bengal bashing kind of title yeah. where you couldn't beat anyone any good. You came up against the Titans and it was the battle of the play action. And in the end, Baker Mayfield actually came up trumps, which is yeah. probably something we didn't see coming with four touchdowns and a really nice day. Mm. Um, again, on the back of two teams that have excellent running games, the passing game can be facilitated through play action. Mm. That's the way it went. Browns did it better. 40, 41 to 35. In the yeah. End. Well, I, I will say this, but I said last week that I didn't have... The- confidence in the Browns beating any of the AFC playoff teams at the moment um, and I said they needed a statement win on the weekend egg on your face and well none of us tipped them we didn't but no. that's you know 
that was probably more of a coin flip there than anything else. But this is probably the best I've ever seen Baker Mayfield play. Yeah, it was nice. Well, this yeah. extends his... He's had one interception across the last six games now. Yeah. So yeah. he is absolutely flying as a yeah. game manager yeah. now. And it came out on the week, and I think Jarvis Landry said it himself. Everyone calls us a running team, but we don't have to be a running yeah, team. Yeah, exactly. And I think they proved that on the weekend, which yeah. probably shocked the Titans a little bit, and they probably weren't ready for it. But yeah, I think they also got some. They also got some costly turnovers early yeah. against the Titans, and were able to run up the score to seventeen nothing at one point. Mm-hmm. And then the Titans obviously couldn't really run the ball as much as they probably would have That's liked exactly to it, either. Yeah. So they had to throw a lot more often, which took away the like sit- game situation less, less game, predictable. Game situations and scripts. Are, what can dictate if if you're built to run the football with Derek Henry and that's all you are known for and all you do really really well? I mean, mm. obviously got AJ Brown and Corey Davis and whatnot that are pretty yeah. decent as well, but they took away the Titans' identity and pretty much did it better than them on yeah. the day. Yeah, it's big for them, massive for them. And Nick Chubb is so deadly out of the backfield as well, like mm. getting thrown to. Like he had a couple of really He's nice. Probably catches. more dynamic than Henry in that sense. Mm, in yeah, catching game. And I think more dynamic it's than people actually threat. give yeah, him. Yeah. He's more dynamic than people are can give him credit for either. Mm. You don't really think of him like that at all. Oh, you just think of him as a bowling ball. Yeah, absolutely. Just, so short and a nugget. You like look at him, and it yeah. just looks like he's just going down and played Skittles with a buddy. It's a huge win for them. <laughs> the opposition if defense. anything takes a gloss off that window, it's 24 second half points conceded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Abs- what, it shouldn't have got anywhere near that close. In what should have been a marquee win for the Browns for everyone to really take notice, they've only ended up winning this game by six points. Yeah, and I feel like it was 38 to 10 at some something yeah. like that at some point. Yeah, well, at the half, it was 38 to 11. Yeah. yeah. So it's disappointing for them. It's to, very disappointing for them to mm. lose their way a little bit and not really like stamp them out. I think they were quite authoritative, but like you say, those turnovers early did mm. establish the narrative quite yeah. quickly. And to be fair, if this was the Chiefs, I would say that you know they put the queue in the rack. So yeah. maybe they put the queue in the rack. Yeah, but that's probably true. Yeah, I know, but still, it's when very you do subjective it, of you. I know. I mean, no, no, I don't usually do that. Yeah. They had a chance for an onside kick right at the end of the Titans. Yeah, mm. you don't want to be giving anyone that chance, no, especially you when no. you're up by no. four scores. Not when you've got a franchise history like the Browns. No, not at but all. But nine and three. Who could have predicted the Browns would be nine and three? Yeah, that's, that's remarkable. True. And then we touched on it um, when we we're off air, having a, a little um, debrief in the green room before we mm. get going about coach of the year conversations and how Stefanski's probably it's two horse race. It's probably yeah. a two horse race with him and Flores down in Miami. Absolutely. Um, I think what he's done there, turning around from the basket case that Freddie Kitchens kind of turned it in, well, didn't turn it into, but didn't help get their out lack of, of a coach hiring process is what yes. cost them a year. Yeah, well, yeah. exactly right. They're a front office, but um. Good luck to them. Nine and three is a really mm. good, really good situation. Schnazzy's touched on their record, um, their record, their fixture for the rest of the year. Looks like they might be. Um, we reckon they'll probably get pretty pretty to eleven and five. Yeah, mm. which would definitely make it yeah. playoffs. And, and it's yeah, going to make it interesting. And, Twelve and four if they upset the Steelers. Yeah, exactly so. right. And one of those games left is against the Ravens too, which so will they make could it actually mm. end up pretty nicely here. Yeah, and they mm. could actually put the the nail in the Ravens playoff okay. hopes. Mm. So that's going to be one to watch when we get well, yeah, to it. The Ravens are currently what. Two games out. Yeah. So, mm. and you know, Slim Slam and the Bandwagon fan will be all over that. Absolutely. Um, the Jets and Raiders played a game that was, ended up being quite surprising um, for every other reason than the Jets ended up losing, which is a pretty consistent narrative. But mm. <clears throat> as we touched on in Good Call, Bad Call, a zero blitz when you've got Henry Ruggs on the other side and man to man coverage. Mm. Reeks of I'm trying to lose this game a little bit. It and does, that's Blaise. what happened. 31 to 28. I. Man. Absolutely hate prevent defense, Blaz. Yeah. Which for those of at home that don't know what prevent defense is, it's pretty much dropping seven into coverage mm. and blitzing with like three or four. Yeah. Um, they didn't opt to do that, mm. and they could have easily given up the middle of the field and let them had thirty yards because a field goal was never going to tie it or win it. Yeah. So the only thing they couldn't afford they didn't to even do have any timeouts either. No, no. it was twenty-eight twenty-four. Boundary, keep yeah. Him, yeah. Keep him in, keep him in bounds. bounds. Yep. It was all they had to it's do. A very play the basic and play five guys on the. On the end zone. We're talking a high school team could have figured this out. Yeah, like it's not a com- like, it's not a complicated and scenario. They don't play prevent defense in that situation, and they let one over the top. Yeah, it's just mind boggling. It's really, really bad, and it's it speaks to the state of that franchise. <laughs> it probably s- speaks to their their mindset and what they want to achieve. Yeah, anyway. to be honest, I can't. I I think this is tanking. One hundred percent. They didn't want to win this game. What they think they had Prime Reavers out <laughs> on an island. Yeah. I just don't know. Bizarre. They just didn't. They just didn't want to win the game, so that's yeah. why they were happy to play that, draw up that last play. Because yeah. I mean, at the time, they didn't, wouldn't want to go one and one with Jacksonville mm. after mm. all that's happened this year, yeah. all that they've been through. Yeah. Donald's not the future. The coach isn't the future. Let's start the new year fresh with a new coach. Yeah. They had no intentions of winning this game, and when they were up, they were like, "Shit, what do we do?" Yeah. Mm. And you end up 
I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. I reckon it they would have they would have sent Henry Ruggs and Carr a nice present this week. Yeah. They're so <laughs> thankful that that play happened. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Carr didn't overthrow him or something like mm. that. that was a nice play from Carr. Well, Carr, Carr, was. Carr yeah. had overthrown Aguilar on the play before. On the play before mm. it. Yeah. Like, that he one was, was open. He was too. open as well. Yeah. He was open. Yeah. So that's how you know it's tanking. Yeah. Mm. It's Which just. It is what it is. The Jags would be flat. Yes, they would indeed, and they only just and the Ravens would be flat. Well, they took, the yeah. Jags. The Jags took them to overtime. The Vikings. We move on to the Jags and Vikings. We shall. Mm. Yeah, we so shall. 27-24, an overtime Indeed. victory for the Vikings. Yep. Mm. And at one point, it was looking like the Jets were going to get their first win, and the Jags were going to get their second win, and we were just blowing up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we would blow up the whole thing. We're like, what is going we're, we're on here? Mm. Slammer's guarantee was cactus all over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. All, Nearly over the all four legs went down, and oh, that would have been magnificent. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was almost raining from the ground. It was just a weird day. It yeah. was just bizarre. One. The only thing that could have made this weekend's results even weirder is if the Chiefs lost. Yeah. Like, and they like and they weren't going that hot. They weren't going crash hot. They tried yeah. everything possible yeah. to lose yeah. that game. Yeah, they caught a touchdown that they didn't give. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's amazing what can happen when you play a team with a quarterback, but, isn't it? Mm. I mean, the Jags. The Jags looked good. Yeah, but the Vikings, we've known them to be all season. They're inconsistent. What they're sitting six and six. Now. They're in the playoffs. Yeah. They're in. They're in the wild card spot. Yeah, yep, they are. They are in the last wild card spot currently. And they're one of those teams that's lost three games but under three points. Yeah. Mm. So you know, I the, when I if the playoffs started today, they'd get the Packers NFC North match up in the first round. You'd love that. Oof, Didn't they lose earlier one. in the season by like three points to them as well? Yeah, it was actually close. I would yeah. love Justin Jefferson on that Packers secondary. Oh. Justin Wouldn't Jefferson just, would love He's that. your guy. Really. Yes, please. He, he is, is my your guy. guy. And I'm making a huge plea. He is your Calvin Ridley. He is my Calvin yeah. Ridley. You're right. Yeah. He's better than Calvin Ridley. Don't you dare. That is ridiculous. Blaze, we watched the highlights before yeah. and you were losing your mind. Ridley, Kevin Ridley is off his Ridley head. Ridley had some serious highlight well, plays. Je- Jefferson's the, in his first 12 games, no. only the fifth rookie wide receiver to get 1,000 yards. Yeah. So he's the first Viking fine. to do it since Randy Moss as well. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's the fine. first wide receiver to do it since the great Odell Beckham. Yep. He has seamlessly great stepped is not in the right to, word there. to the to the um the hole that Diggs left. Mm. And he has just filled that role perfectly. Um and if it wasn't for um Adam Thielen's uh end zone targets, he'd probably have another two to three touchdowns on the mm. year. And then this conversation about him and Herbert for offensive rookie of the year. Be um, closer. Would be even closer. So if it wasn't a quarterback award, it'd be over already. But yeah. the fact that it is, I think, um, lends it to a two horse race. And I think, you know, I just, you couldn't be happier with how that's turned out for him and that franchise. Oh, the front oh line absolutely. Be They'd yeah. be absolutely be right. Lips going, we couldn't have done this any better. No. Barely um, lost. Barely lost anything. Perfect. In saying that, Diggs is having a great season too. Oh, so oh not, yeah. We're not discarding no, Diggs. It's wow. almost a win. On the Bills. Both, it's a win win. Both yeah. teams would be happy with how that's yeah. gone down. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just good, <coughs> honest, wholesome football. Mm. It's a good trade. It's it is a win win. Yep, it is. Dolphins, Bengals. Exactly what you look for. Dolphins, Bengals. Mm. Now, Chucky, this one was quite the chippy affair. It was very chippy, Blaze. Yeah. Multiple people ejected. Yep. Uh, late, Xavier Howard, oh, who also had another pick. It's he's insane. If he's not defensive player of the yeah, year, has to be. I'll eat my hat. Has to be. Um, eat your hat. Eat my hat. Eat it. This one, I'll eat it, Blaze. Well, you should be probably wearing that because... I will be wearing it. <laughs> um, yeah, they were insane. They're, but yeah, massive dust up uh, 10 minutes to go in the last quarter. Xavier Howard got ejected. Uh, Devontae Parker got ejected. So we there think was it was a dirty hit that sparked. D- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he called a fair catch. Yeah. I can't remember yeah. who the player was called a fair catch, and the Bengals player just went. No, he didn't call fair. Off. He didn't call fair catch. I don't think he. But the guy got there early, like before he made the catch, he splattered through him. Oh, so like he okay. hit him before he was able allowed to hit him. The guy was he was flattened. That's right. Yeah, absolutely That's ridiculous. Nice. And the then ball was, hadn't even come to him yet. Yeah, yeah. Just took him out. <laughs> oh, it, like he flattened him, and then the ball came down and hit the guy that was tackling him in the back. Yeah. And like, Parker went, went after he went, him. Yeah, yeah. And then Parker and then, went after him, and Xavier Howard went after him, and then Flores Coach was Flory getting in on it. Like it was, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it got very, very chippy. And then the last you know ten minutes of that game was very chippy the yeah. whole time. So it did end up nineteen seven there, and the Dolphins came away with it. But anytime your head coach Brian Flores, who I imagine would be a bad man. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's just over there throwing hands with like, well, we're trying to throw hands anyway with the opposition players. Mm. We, It's good spectatoring. Yeah. But it's not good for the NFL and the image and certainly not the concussion that protocols hit. and whatnot. Yeah. The hit is terrible. It's shocking. And it's not what you want. Um, it, it, There's a duty of care when you play professional sport, would have thought. The yeah. thing the thing is though, Blaz, if he had made contact with the ball first, they would have been lapping it up as a fantastic hit. Yeah. But because he got there half a second too early it's like horrendous and you could have killed the guy yeah, like, yeah. so it's yeah yeah it's okay like, yeah, tiptoe the line yeah. yeah 
white line fever is a thing. Yeah. Everyone who's played sport understands that. Yep. But this is going a step too far. Yeah. And I think you touched on it beautifully. The duty of care you have for your fellow yeah, athletes yeah. and your fellow, yeah. you know, players in the NFL. Well, especially after what yeah. it's got to be there. Especially after what you saw not too long ago with Shazier breaking his neck. Yeah. yeah. He can't play anymore. But the most or underrated just, thing <laughs> here is the Dolphins could be nine and three if they hadn't had a stuff up game against Denver. Yeah. And then what that would mean they were on a nine game winning streak. Yeah. Because they started zero and three or yeah. one and three. I think, like we mentioned before with the Browns, it's definitely those two teams in terms of the Coach of the Year conversation and the two teams that probably exceeded our expectations oh. pre-season of what they were actually going to look like. Even the Dolphins after four weeks of the I season. Think, yeah, exactly. it's, it's just ridiculous. Expectations being exceeded, it's definitely coming from the Dolphins. Yeah. We had the Browns being... We did have them like yeah, just making it. I yeah. think we had them being... That season predictions about ten and six. Yeah, I reckon ten and six was ten what we six, had. Ten and six, nine and five. So we expected them to be up there. But yep. the Dolphins, we I had them finishing third in the division. Yeah, yeah. I think just one win less than the Patriots. Yeah, yeah. And they are absolutely flying. And their defense is one of the best defenses in football. And absolutely, if not the best. It I'm may excited. Be the best. Week fourteen, they've got your boys. They got do. The Chiefs. Yeah, that'll they be do. a good matchup. It'll be very interesting to see how that. <laughs> Defense can stack up against probably the best offense that we've seen in a while. Because if, if their deep, it's probably getting into the preview show here, but if their defense crumbles, their offense cannot go with the Chiefs. No. no, 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 they'll get blown out of the water. And that is the thing that's probably the Dolphins are maybe one or two years away from is having that elite offense to go mm. with that defense. Yeah, and that'll be a great team. I hope yeah. that game's sitting in a reasonable time slot. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but yeah, it would be interesting. We'll have to have a look. We'll have to look at that in the preview the show for next week. Yeah, I think it's the four thirty game. Okay, mm. we do have the preview. I'll be getting show, up obviously. Then. on the way. Um, <sighs> Texas We're going to be away. We're going to be in Normanville. We'll have to go up at 4.30 and watch Yeah, we'll it. have to stream. On the phones. Sounds good. Mm. <laughs> Do you want to make any other plans live on air? Or I don't know. Up? If anyone wants to be anywhere there. <laughs> <laughs> Normanville, Caramon, Buck. Oh. Anyway. Texans and Colts, <laughs> 20 to 26. Mm. Um, the Colts come away here and probably got away with it on the back of Houston. Houston um, making a few real nasty I blunders at the a, end. went out on, a, on an island here myself and took... The Texans. And I, they've been playing superbly under Romeo Cornell, but I don't reckon that's because of Cornell. Yeah. I just think they're actually a good team who just had a tough tough season. Yeah. But oh, that fumble right at the end. Yeah. It I hurts. cannot believe it. I was sitting there licking my lips going, Deshaun Watson's about to score here. Mm. They're going to beat the Colts. There's no way Philip Rivers puts together a, a 30, you know, one mm. minute drive. It's going, yes, yes. The ball hits the ground. Explosive. It's game over. so sad considering Deshaun's had to be pretty much perfect for six weeks to get this team into any kind of relevancy in terms of being competitive. Mm. And then it comes down to him and he fumbles it and it's just like... JJ Watts looked like he could yeah. have killed a man on the side. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a serious stuff up, but the Colts get out of absolute... Out, yeah, of, jail. out of jail. Yeah. Like, that could have cost them going to the postseason. Yeah. So, massive for them. Big swing. We did mention um, in the preview show that the Texans could play spoiler for a couple of teams mm. down the stretch and the Colts yeah. are certainly in that box. I think they've got them again. They've got them they? again. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, you said last week that they won't yeah. beat them twice and yeah. they almost didn't beat them the first time. Yeah. So. so they'll be lo- they'll be smiting from that one. Um, the Bears and Lions, uh, last week in the preview show, we got through our prediction for it in five seconds. Mm. Um, the result here was, I believe, 34 to 30. Yeah. Um, the Lions did come away with the win. Any takeaways here, boys? I picked them because yeah. Matt Patricia was gone. Mm. First coach, when first game, we, first win. When will we learn? When will we learn? We've made that mistake multiple times. They well, were def- there's, been, there's been three coaches coach their first game this year and they've all three have won. Yeah. So it it's bad learned. juju. It is what bad. No, 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 no. There's been four now, hasn't there? No, nah, three, I think. Patricia. Let's think about this later. Yeah, yeah let's okay. not yeah. let's not start a throw it but, on the um, The Lions were down two scores here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> and then they still <laughs> can't even. <laughs> but they, they still came back and beat the Bears. They didn't The Bears are just a team, like they finally put up some points in the back of Trubisky, but that's because you're playing against the Lions. Yeah. It's only three. Thanks. <laughs> Good for the Lions, gotta win. I was going to say they're going to extend Matt Patricia, but he is one of the three that are now gone. So, yeah, good for them. Um, that franchise lacks any relevancy whatsoever. Yeah, let's not spend too much on this game. Neither of them come out the playoffs, and who really gives a rat's Absolutely. The Saints, Taysom Hill threw his first and second ever passing touchdowns mm. in a 21-16 to win. I was hoping for a little upset action here from Matt Ryan and the Falcons boys, but they didn't quite get there in the end. They yeah. pushed them, but um, it did, they did come away um, without the chocolates, 16-21 to here. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a weird game, mm. wasn't it? Um, Saints get the job done, but like they're ten and two, leading the NFC, and for probably the best part of a month, they've been playing not like you know average football yeah. at best, like sort of getting lucky on who they're coming up against, and yeah, the Falcons. 
What do you make of their entire season, really? It's well, what just do you make of their bizarre. recent Groundhog Day? Their recent yeah, history, isn't it? It's it's same just, thing happened last year where they yeah. started the season one and six and finished at home with a flourish of wins. And look, they're back on track to the same thing this year. Yeah. Some, build some false hope. Everyone's going to come back, say, oh, we've got Matt Ryan. You know, we've got Sam's mate Ridley. Yeah. You get a middle Still of the road. Julio Jones. Yeah. yeah. You get a middle of the road draft pick. So I think this year they turn that into Trufant at corner, I think. Yeah. Um, and, you know. A middle of the road cornerback's not really changing your franchise that no, often, absolutely um, not. and I think they'll probably look at something similar this year. So I know they're kind of stuck in a in almost like a holding pattern with Matt Ryan, obviously stacking really good numbers, and yeah. Julio and Ridley um, being such a good complementary pairing there at receiver. I just don't know, like, how do you break? You can't break through that I think ceiling. I think no. we spoke about it at the start of the year when they were going through these struggles and ended up getting rid of the head coach. Yeah. But um. We were talking, it's like a systemic issue within the franchise. Mm. Come, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure the Blanks family owns it, the Arthur Blanks, he's the owner, mm. of, the fa- oh, owner of the family, owner of the team. Mm. Probably <laughs> and I think since too. he's been there, and like since that Super Bowl, they've just capitulated as a franchise. Oh, like, completely. And I think they need a, like a head coach clean out is one thing, but there's a bit more to it than just that. Mm. I think your head coach shapes your, you know, shapes your team. Yeah. But... There's some players in there in the locker room. There's it always must be a bit of a bad smell. There's always elements well. you've got to you've got to dig out all the um you know it's probably poor timing, but you've got to dig out all the cancer to make mm. sure it doesn't come back. So yeah, it's it's, um, it's just not good, is it? No. There's just something wrong there over and over again. It's just mediocrity. It is mediocrity. Mm. It's um and it's systemic and it's constant. The Saints just desperately need Drew Brees to come back. They do. They're a much better. They'll be a much better team. Or to give crab legs a run. It's too late to give crab legs. I know. Run. <laughs> it's sad. What have we, it's, it, I just can't... You've got four games what left for the rest of the season. Yeah. You, you're you going to get Drew Brees back. They're going to play him. Yeah. Apparently, he's week to week now. I yeah. Somewhere, but I, I think they'll just keep holding him. So do I. They, they got the so Chiefs in two weeks. So do I. Yeah, maybe we'll come back for that. Mm. Yeah. Or mind games, you reckon? Just play Taysom Hill and not show him what you've got in case you get to the Super Bowl. Well, if you've got it. A- if you got a dud, mm. for, like if you're playing against someone that's not very good next week, I'm not sure who they've got. But mm. you wouldn't play him next week, and you'd wait until you got the Chiefs. Yeah, but mm. what I'm saying is against the Chiefs, though, don't play him. Yeah, yeah. I know, but and I think at that don't show your hand too early. At that point, they could still only be one win in front of the Packers, so I don't think you want to risk losing the number one seed and having that week off, which would be pretty beneficial for that old roster. It's the old playoff pictures. Mm. Eh? It is it's starting to f- it yeah, is starting to form, and it's good. And we've still got a few marquee matchups to close out the year yet, so we can't mm. wait for those. Hey, let's get into the re- well, the first reason why the guarantee went down this week. Mm. The Seahawks Put it on slam. lost yeah. a shocker to the Giants, 12-17, to 17, where the defense for the Giants is really the story here, being able to stop Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, Tony Lockett, Chris Carson, all like. It, it was, but I saw it and I still don't believe it. Yeah, I cannot fathom how the Seahawks only put up 12 points on the year against anybody, let alone mm. the Giants. It's mind-boggling. It this is. Might be a bit of a hot take. Yep. But Russell Wilson is not going to get any MVP votes this oh, year. Oh, he won't get one. No. There's no dropped, way. Drop white off the radar. He is going to be... It's a two-horse race at best. Yep. Yeah. And the second horse being... Um, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Yeah. And I don't think... Like, he's having a good year. You'd have Josh Allen ahead of Russell Wilson at the moment. At this stage, I think you I would. Think you yeah. would. With the game Josh Allen played today, they yeah. have capitulated. And at the start of the year, we were all singing his praises. We had the had the Seahawks as the number one side and we we gave their defense credit in the last few weeks for coming mm, to the party you know? absolutely yeah and it's had the inverse effect the defense plays well the offense plays better <laughs> that's what yeah. I was just thinking like 17 points is not a lot to give up talk about no. Robert, Robin Peter to pay Paul that's essentially what's happened here we've had a complete s- you like that no. <laughs> complete switch <laughs> from offense to defense we have and it's really quite Concerning. I mean, DK is still doing his thing, and Lockett's dropped off a lot. Lockett's dropped off. I think they've had some injuries at yeah. running back. Yeah, that's just the game. They've you got can't Carson. To have. They've got Carson back as well. And the worst part about all of this is they've they've lost to Colt McCoy. Yeah. yeah, which is remarkable. Could you? That's the most 2020 thing ever. If I had told you in the season preview that the Seahawks were going to go down to the Giants was, at home, was this in Seattle to Colt McCoy? This yeah. was in Seattle. I was watching the replay Holy of the game. Hell. And like the first few drives, the commentator thought Daniel Jones was playing. <laughs> he just couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's just bizarre. But with that win, now I know I, f- I flagged this before and you didn't love it again either, but I'm going to ask you again because oh. you've, you've, you've had time to sit on it. Okay. Does Colt McCoy keep the job because he beat the Seahawks? I'm going with no. I'm still going with no. No, I don't love it. But I know what you're saying. He's got obviously a little tick. That's, on- a, that's a statement win. He's got a tick on his resume. Now, we, we did say that maybe Daniel Jones wouldn't have got that win due to his ball security issues. Um, so Yeah, uh, so is it like a 
situation in Miami where you take Fitz out because he's more turnover prone and stuff and you put in the guy well, that's just going to hold on to the yeah, ball. Yeah, but it's, it's opposite of that though because yeah. one's going to be the future of your franchise and yeah. one's exactly. not. Mm. Exactly. I'll give it to you this way. If, if you take pride in the fact that Daniel Jones is your, your pick six from a couple of years back and you need mm. him to be your quarterback, then you probably will pick him. But if you take that aspect of it out, which obviously you can't, then you'd probably go with Colt McCoy on the back yeah. of that win. I yeah, think yeah. that's kind of a, that's fair enough. the two It's factors. almost as well like they're, they're, <coughs> the Giants' defense has turned it on. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're one of the best defenses as mm. well. Like Washington's turned it on too. Which they have been pretty hot. Four. No doubt. The issue is if the Giants' defense play a bad game, you can't... Colt McCoy's not going to win you a game. No, yeah. Where Daniel Jones tracking. gives He's you a better chance. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Well, Danny Dines might break off a... Um, an 80 yard run. An 80 yard run, or, you know. Fall over. And just stacks. <laughs> Mate, this top, this top eight offense is coming back. Oh, I'm it you. is flying. Speaking Absolutely. of falling over, Blaze. Your mates. The Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals. Far oh, out. This so, is a team that is just so frustrating. Signature win against the Bills back yeah. in week nine. Yep. Mm. Lost three games straight since. Yeah, and look average. They yeah, like, they look poor. It's not like they're unlucky bizarre. at the moment. They were consistently inconsistent. And they won on a, won and on now a prayer. Now they're just consistently shit. Yeah, mm. yep. Oh, I'll take that. One on a prayer against the Bills as well. Yeah, shouldn't have won. Yeah, had no right to win it in <clears> anyway. <throat> 28 to 38 was the score here. The and Rams, it wasn't that close either. It was 38-21 yeah. at one point. Yeah, the Rams are really, uh, you know, obviously they had a bit of a, a hiccup against the Niners, but they're kind of their bogey team this year yeah, anyway. It's been their bogey team for years. And the Cardinals just continue to disappoint and to the point of madness in some respects. Oh. Like, you know, how, many, how many times have we backflipped on the Cardinals? Yeah. Shot? And I mean, Schnauzer, you've, and got, you, you've got your issues with oh, Kyler Murray's um, body language at the moment. Kyler Murray, you are sitting on a very hot seat. Ooh. You were the number one draft pick. Yeah. Yeah. You're the marquee player at that team. They've got Cliff Kingsbury to compliment your skill you got- set. Cliff Kingsbury, who they've bought in, mm-hmm. and he's put his faith in you to be the guy. Mm-hmm. You walk around on the sidelines like you're the only player that matters on that team. That, yeah. And when things don't go right on defense, sook. you sook. Yeah. When things don't go right on offense, you sook, even when it's on you. Or special teams when you miss field goals, which is pretty consistent considering your kicker bloody sucks. But yes, he sooks. He sooks a lot. And when you're the captain, mm-hmm. the leader, mm-hmm. the franchise player... You've got to rally those boys yeah. and get them on your back and you've got to take them to the promised land. And you are doing the complete opposite. It looks like a kid that's had his toys taken away. He does. A he lot looks of like the time. It like, looks like a... Sounds, and, like, sounds like Tom Brady. And not dissimilar to his... In his size. Yeah, but you know what? The difference is Tom Brady's got the runs on the board. Yeah. 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 Colin Murray's exactly. got nothing on the board. Yeah. Exactly. No, you're not wrong. Exactly. I think his, his body language, we, we speak about it pretty much every week when we sit down and have a look. It is just... It's not what you'd fashion a leader to look like. They're, they're, in times they are a very frustrating team to watch. Almost, so they must be even more frustrating can, to be the quarterback. That's too. how it conveys though. Like, yeah, yes, I know. You know, you, you have something but go is, wrong. He looks like what we look like when we talk about the Cardinals. Yeah, exactly. Which but, like, he looks like what we look like when we talk about Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, that is an issue. That yeah. is an issue. Like you are not fostering any kind of resilience or, yeah. you I'm, know, underdog mentality. Why it's just on my back, fellas. I'll carry you there. None of it. Yeah, not, none of it. You're not selling belief out of your hands to these players. No. Like they're looking at you, see you looking all dejected and whatnot. Yeah. They look at you and then there's like, well, he's not confident. He's angry at us. Yeah. Like, how am I going to respond to that? And like, the answer is not very well. Like, and he needs yeah. to have it. Like we said earlier in the season, he needs to have a look in the mirror. Yeah. Once again, get that same step ladder out, mate. And I reckon stand on it all summer long. Yeah. Mm. Because you've got some, all, all winter long, you've got some work to do. Absolutely. And a lot of it is with you personally and not the team. Fair warning, language warning. If you're going to sit on the sideline every time anything goes wrong with a face like a fucking slapped Jesus. ass, whack, then maybe you should consider pulling your finger out and actually having a dip when you get a chance. Mm. Because at the moment, your little airy fairy twinkle toes bullshit is not stacking up. It's not cutting it. It's gone again. It's not cutting the mustard. It's not a cutting little. the mustard. And you're in a division that is cherry ripe to have. You know, obviously mm. the Seahawks and Rams are already going all right next year. Hello, the Niners are going to be healthy. Uh, who are only a game behind them. Who are only a game behind you already and they mm. could run you the F over mm. next year and, and you could be have, last. You're not going to have an extra wildcard team next year. Yeah. So yeah. They're keeping seven. Are they? Yeah. It's here to stay. It's not just a COVID thing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, with, that, with all that said, Cardinals, pull your bloody finger That's out. That's a beatdown if ever I've heard one, yeah. Blaze. Now, speaking of beatdowns. <laughs> this was a huge beatdown. Mm. And is it really here to stay? Yeah. I swear it was a COVID thing at the start of the year. No, no, that was definitely beforehand. Hey, Anthony Lynn's career (laughs) is probably not here to stay um, (laughs) as I go yet again for that man's job. Mm. 45 to O. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. Do not. 
Zero forty-five. You heard right. The Patriots mm. had a absolute field day here, albeit primarily defense. Uh, I think they had two pick sixes. They had they one, had two one on special teams. teams. Two, your two on teams. Your yeah. mate Gunner. My the only name in the NFL that might go close to Willie Gay mm. is Gunner Oshesky. Uh, yeah. Because he sounds like he should be a mobster out of Chicago or something like that. <laughs> sounds like a UFC fighter or and something. He just and he was just bone. He was a stud on special teams. A stud. I think he had oh, a hundred. <laughs> He had one touchdown, 180 return yards. He had yeah. a touchdown, like a reception, receiving touchdown. He had himself a day. <laughs> this is a the thing day. with the Patriots. That every week, someone else stands up. Yeah. Mm. They had like, Jacoby Myers stood up and they had that bird bloke. Then Gunner stands up. Yeah. Like next week, Cam Newton might play well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shot. No, don't, <laughs> hold, <laughs> don't hold your breath. <laughs> that came straight out of Gunnar Oshevsky's little Tommy gun. Yep. Anyways... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who did that? We have lost it. Um, lost yeah. But um, I think the thing here, we, we talk on it all the time. We are so fond of the Chargers. Yeah. We believe they are a team that's primed to make a move up. Yeah. They're probably, you know, what we thought the Cardinals might be mm. when we saw how good Herbert yeah, was playing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and they've just been shocking. Yeah, that doesn't even begin to describe it. They've been deplorable. It's really, really disappointing. And oh. I think it's probably getting exacerbated by the fact that you've got Herbert who's just come in as only in his, what, like 12th game or something like that. Yeah. Less than that. And you he, can't say that we're a playoff well. team and th- and then just because you lose Derwin James and a couple other blokes here and there for a few games, you're a three-win team. You go 45-0. and You're not 0. that much better because of Derwin James. You go 45-0 and 0 against the Patriots. Mm. Um, yeah, some real red flags going on down there in LA. Not that anyone um, cares about the Chargers anyway, nah. but um, you know, in terms of, I guess, the future of Chargers Justin, fans don't care about the Chargers. No, exactly. Mm. Yeah, Chargers well, could be playing in Arizona, and Arizona wouldn't even realize. Yeah. Mm. Well, Justin Herbert's family, I imagine, like Justin, and I don't want this for him for much longer. It would be so sad. His house at Thanksgiving. Yeah. A quick one here. I could be wrong, Slammer. Yeah. You might have to check me on this. Patriots are they three wins on the trot here? Three wins on the trot. They could be. Because I reckon they beat the Rams. Pretty good they since the, the Cardinals. turn. Pretty good since the turn. Yeah, they definitely won last week against the Cardinals. And it was, and the, was Rams it the Rams the week, the week before? before. And they had the Ravens could not be. long before that as well in the wet. No, sorry. It was the Ravens, not the Rams. Yeah. So it might even I be four out of five. Th- yeah, I think it, I was going to say, I think it's four out of five. And mm. it might be three and oh, like you said as well. Yeah. So they're going along. All right. That, this is the Bill Belichick conversation though. Like this man just knows how to are manu- they, manufacture wins. Are they five and six or are they six and five? I think they're five and six. Okay. That's what... It's a great question. We'll come back to you on that one. We'll come back to you in the preview show on that one. Once again, putting the pressure on the Cardinals. Yeah. It just keeps coming. It keeps coming from all directions for them, unfortunately. That's the nature of the NFL. The Packers and the Eagles, Aaron Rodgers threw his 400th touchdown in this one. It was 30 to 16 and a bit of a masterclass from the old man himself. Um, Devontae Adams had another good day here as oh, well. Oh, another two touchdowns. He's absolutely flying. Him and Aaron Rodgers are probably, their their connection is on point. Yep. There's probably not a lot better in the league at the moment. Nah. Um, on the other hand, the Eagles, Carson Wentz probably doesn't have connection with anyone on that team. No, Carson oh. bench. Yes, Carson has been benched. Carson yeah. doesn't know where he is. I feel for Carson here because we shoot Carson down a lot. Mm. We shoot the Eagles down a lot. Slammer was singing Carson's praises. Yeah, he went into season. bat. He did go into bat for him. They have the worst defensive line in the league, the Eagles. Massively. And mm. they've got a quarterback who's had a few injuries. Yep. They have a quarterback who's shot in confidence. Got a wide receiver who's an undrafted free agent who turned into something good and now he's not doing anything. Hashtag full God. Hashtag sorry, Jersey Cartel. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Jalen Hurts. Yes. Yeah. So Jalen Hurts came in and like he what, threw 100 yards on like 6-12 passing. Got wasn't a touchdown, anything overly one impressive. Interception. But what I did actually enjoy was his ability to continue to play. Yep. He's a bit more of a mobile quarterback. Yeah. At yep. his days at Alabama and Oklahoma, I yeah. believe, yeah. where he transferred Oklahoma. to. Yep. You know, he creates extends plays. That's what the modern quarterback does, Shnaz. You don't know. They, they um, extend plays, they stretch them. They make things up. Yeah. And when you have Do an offensive on the line as bad as that and you can actually step up in the pocket and run guys. or throw, I think that just changed the dynamic a bit for the Eagles. So yep. I, if I was the Eagles, I'd put Carson on ice all year. Yeah. Work out how to fix your offensive line. See what you've got in Jalen Hurts. Spend some money on a bloody receiver. Get people... Someone Zach, that get can catch a back. ball. Like you've got Zach Hurts yeah. who's been in and out all year. Well, imagine how bu- how bad your guy Jefferson would look if he was playing for the Eagles. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's where wide receiver careers go to die at the moment. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so our Sega White Side comes to mind. Yeah, it's just. I think they've just got a bit of work to do there about just reshaping this roster, yeah. getting everyone fit, and then working out. Okay, one, are we a team that's going to compete in the next four years, or are we going to rebuild? Because yeah. if you're not going to compete, you've got to trade Carson. Wentz. I think he's yeah. gone. I think he's gone at the end of the year. And I think we've got different opinions on who he should go to, but I reckon he should go to Indianapolis. Yeah, mm. good fit. Well, he's behind a good line there, that's for sure. Oh, Phil's behind he, a great line. Cost, he can barely move in the pocket. Yeah. He'd cost more than um, Darnold to get, but I think he'd be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, the upside's clearly there. Yeah. The confidence is just shot to bits at the moment, and I think he just needs a fresh start. He needs out of that franchise. Yeah, and I think 100%. We've kind of joked about it before, having Nick Foles' statue out the front. I genuinely, I honestly, I honestly think, think that plays a part. Yeah, 100%. I did say, I mean, <laughs> sports psychology... I, you know, the top athletes always seem to say the same thing. Like, you know, you can only train your body so far. Your body can only get you so far. Your mind mm. has to play a part there eventually. Now, not putting down Carson Wentz's mental fortitude at all, but like, there's obviously something going on there. Oh, oh it's going got, on for a while. One of the biggest teams it, in America. Yeah. Got the national media screaming down your neck. And yeah. how long it was drawn out about which one they should get rid of. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I think there's issues. Yeah. Watch this space. Say where there's not issues, wise. No, it's not in Kansas City. You know, no, you know where there is issues in Kansas City mm. in the red zone and on run defense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the runs defense isn't great. Run defense isn't good. No, I'll give you that. But it's eleven and one, so who gives conversions a on our red zones um, <laughs> haven't been great recently. What was the stat at, at the half of the game? Their last seven red zone entries. Yeah, they didn't score a touchdown. But you know why? Because there's not enough room for Patrick to throw mm. forty-five yard and, bombs and then normally running. the red zone plays that they do score like the ones they have this year you know the Under Armour to uh, Travis Kelsey and whatnot. it's more tricky. trick plays yeah, they they oh yeah they do trick plays it and stuff. they like, don't have a ground and powered running back they don't, they don't smash mouth it's not football. even that though but you don't have that that receiver besides Kelsey probably who can actually go up there and make a big catch in the end zone yeah like a big physical like um, Ke- body like presence Hill might be one of the best wide receivers in the entire league but he's not going to monster somebody and jump over the top of him yeah, he's just not, not big enough not when the yeah. defence folds Sammy in the red zone Sammy Watkins is just coming back from injury yeah Mikael Hardman and Robinson, they're not going to catch the ball in the end zone either. No. So if they've got a weakness in the game, it's they just probably don't have that tall wide receiver. Yeah. Mm. And it's not a bad weakness to have, but no. it's one that's a, li- a little bit concerning. It would just be, if it would Watkins just be a can get back to health, I think that, that problem's fixed a little bit. Yeah. And especially when you can have <coughs> yeah. me, you him could. and Kelsey in there at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any real concern. I know uh, the stat is. It doesn't read well, but it when, hasn't been an issue all year. It hasn't though. been an issue. It's just the last. It couple hasn't no. been an issue. And it's not. It's not. An, yeah. Not. The main just, thing yeah. is when you go in. I guess you're at the red. Zo- you're in the red zone all the bloody time. So mm. like, it's just. It's ridiculous down there. But the Broncos did get a quarterback back here, mm. so it was twenty-two to sixteen. Um, respectable performance. They really did push him for for the majority of the game. They did blaze, but that's eleven straight wins for the Chiefs against the Broncos. Yeah. The Chiefs almost played down to the Broncos' level a bit. They did a bit, yeah. yeah. Same way they did with the, the Raiders and the uh, Chargers. Is yeah. that the concerning thing out of all of this? I think it's more divisional games. I'm not that worried about it when it's a divisional game. If it was somebody else, if it was like a bad team outside of the division, I'd be a bit more concerned. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm just trying to poke holes in a, in a solid, in the best team. If it I've still been here. I've just got unfailable faith. In, I was never in, worried in Patrick Mahomes. Like we weren't playing well all day. Ridiculous. It was close yeah, all day, and yeah. I was still never worried. I just can't. I can't envision a situation that would make me feel uncomfortable with him at the moment mm. outside of being down, you know, two touchdowns with three minutes. Mm. Tyron Mathai, another two picks. Yeah. Yep. So Tyron Matthew. Yep. He looks great. <laughs> um, but as I said before, the run defense probably need to, you know, shorten yeah. that up a little the bit. The run defense has been Chris Jones pretty been average bit, for about two Chris years. Chris Jones has been a bit quiet. He has, and Frank weeks. Clark has been as well. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. They made Melvin Gordon look like an elite running back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they like they ten, make a lot ten of running carries for 104 time. yards or something stupid. Yeah. Oh, he broke one off for like 80 yards. Yeah, but so yeah. let's not get carried away. It inflates the numbers. Somewhat. It does. It does fans. inflate the numbers, but that's still like they didn't. Yeah, didn't no, look I, hear, I hear what you're saying, mate. <laughs> they haven't looked great against anybody against the run for pretty much the entire year, no. and they're still 11 and one. Yeah, still just cruising along. Mm. Absolutely cruising. But if the Chiefs weren't getting out in front and scoring as many points, then the run defense would be a serious issue because just teams would be able to run mm. the ball. And that's probably where the red zone issue ties into that. Mm. Yeah. Because if you're only going to kick field goals. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Hey, the Steelers and Washington football team. Another um, huge upset. The Steelers coughed up their first game for the year. They've been spittering and sputtering a little bit of late anyway. Um, but the Washington defense got the job done here. 23-17 to 17, mm. um, in the end there. Obviously, that front with Chase Young and a lot. I saw a little highlight clip today when... Sweat. 
Montez Sweat. Chase Young got pressure on Big Ben mm. and a little wink to the camera. Mm. That, he's just got a, he's bit a bad of, man. No doubt about it. Blake. There's a bit no of drip about, about it. it there from the young man the on ex, national TV. The ex Chiefs quarterback did the Chiefs a solid here in this he one did. as well too. He did. Yep. But I think this this loss for the Steelers is one I think they needed to have because they've sort of been puttering along the last probably five to six weeks. Yep. Could have lost quite a handful of games to some average teams. This will either go one or two ways for the Steelers. It'll kick them into gear and they won't lose again for the rest of the year and they'll finish 15-1. and one. Yep. Or it'll completely break them and they'll lose to the Colts and lose to the Browns and lose... Probably have a 13-3 record. And to the Bills. Yeah. yeah. Like they could, yeah, they could end up with three or four lost team, or they could end up with one or which two. Which would erode team. a lot of the credit that built up over the course of the year, which can be harsh, but yeah. unfortunately, like the, there's a lot of talk around um, strength of pitch. Yeah, the schedule has not been rather. Kind of stuff it was anyway. a soft, soft start to yeah. the season. Yeah, so they'd want to put the foot down on the on the tail end of the year to make sure they um, affirm themselves as a premier team in the AFC. Mm. Uh, on the flip side of that, Washington football team right in the mix here for the NFC East. Mm. Obviously, the Giants winning up went upset against the Seahawks in their own right, um, but that competition is now you know, red hot and alive. Mm. I think both these teams' defenses are great. Mm. I think both their coaches are. You got Joe Judge at. Uh, New York, yeah, mm. and then you have Riverboat. old mate Riverboat, <laughs> the motorboat, <laughs> such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you old sailor, you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the old sailor, you've got him. I think they've sort of just got my tits. They, they oh, s- just stop. They started this. <laughs> they started the season poorly, but I think what they were doing was building building a culture. Yeah, mm. and Joe Judge and I think the Giants have turned it around completely. Point that you bring up earlier, Slammer, was what would have happened if Alex Smith started all year? And the thing that I'm going to point out here is Dwayne Haskins just sucks. Yeah, they were always going to give Kyle Allen a go. They were going to give Kyle Allen a go. But if you got Kyle Allen, Kyle Allen out of there by week four, Mm. you would have then had nine weeks of Alex Smith. Yeah, and what what could have that meant? Well, so they were one and five, and they're now five and seven. That's very contrasting. Differences like mm. I just think if you'd played Alex Smith for the entire year, it's not really a conversation. It's, yeah, yeah, they'd be. I think they'd probably be two games clear in the division. Mm. They also lost both the games to the Giants by one yeah. point and three points. If you even flip one of those, they're in the lead. Like they'd be six and six and six, and the Giants would therefore be four, four and eight. eight. You know, they're pretty much home. They're yeah. playing in the playoffs. I think they've shot themselves in the foot by yeah. waiting too long to do it. I think they have. But what I think they've done is they've found their quarterback for next year. Yeah, mm. They're not going to need to go to the draft this year. They can look, maybe shore up their offensive line, maybe get Terry, Scary Terry some help, yeah. some help at yeah. the wide receiver. Yeah, he, was, on he, was, there. he was fifth at the start of the weekend for most yards from a wide receiver. Yeah. Mm. He was so like he's a, a, second, a second year player. He's an absolute ball. Yeah. yeah. He's, so he's a whore. Antonio Gibson, I think, pinged the calf yeah. as well, but he, he was playing pretty well. This season, yeah. So mm. I think you've got your running back. You've got Scary Terry. There's some nice pieces. Your there, defense no is great. Oh, yeah. the defense. Really is sound. good young core. Run with Alex around. Smith. I reckon again next year. Try get yourself to an above 500 record. Make the playoffs in in a week yeah. week division, and then s- assess where you're at. Whether you sign a quarterback. Yeah. You know, you go and in a we- much weaker conference yeah. as well at the moment. Like or, there's, you, know, you know, a six and six is getting in the NFC at the moment, and eight and four. Is yeah. Do they go for Sam Darnold? Well, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. Yeah. Do you put him behind Alex Smith for a year? Yeah. Yeah, I like 100%. it. 100%. I like it. I think you go out and try and get a guy like that when you can get him for like a you third or fourth round. Yeah. You can get him cheap because he's, he's got no currency at the moment low at ri- all. Low risk, high reward. Sit him, behind, kind of sit him behind a vet that knows what he's doing, teach him for a year, and then... Ron Rivera will build his confidence. You know, a, he's a better, a better right offensive man. line. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like the right thing to do for me. And obviously, like, don't hurt yourself. Dan Schneider, but you could also consider picking a name. Yeah, a team name and a logo, that would be fantastic. No, I, <laughs> it's driving me berserk. <laughs> but hey, the football team, working out all right down there in Washington at the moment. The last, last game, game we've got here is the 49ers and Bills. Mm. Um, the Bills really put the foot In Arizona. Down. In Arizona, correct. Yeah, so obviously no football being played in San Francisco at the moment. Um, but yeah, the Bills put the foot down, really commanding performance here um, against the Niners team that... Um, you know, they had a couple of upset wins against the Rams, but outside of that, just kind of struggling along. The Bills' first Monday night football win since 1999. Holy crap. Whoa. Yep. Don't play a lot of games on Monday night. No, because no, they've not. been crap. So, but, yeah. Yes, but 
They are, Josh Allen say what? 30, Insane today. 32 out of 40 passes, yep. 380 yards, four touchdowns. Four touchdowns, four tubbies. Uh, throwing it all over the field. Like <laughs> Stefan Diggs only had like 80 yards. When, he is, had about when he is on, yards. he is so on. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, when, he is one of the like best five players in football when he's on. When yeah. he finds consistency. But he just yeah. has the most massive brain farts where you just look at him and go, mate, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Like the playoff game last year when they were like when they were a mile in front. Well, oh, that was seventeen zero. And then they were behind, Texans. and then he's doing that crap at the end where he's running in the sideline, and he like tried to pitch it behind him. Mate, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, just go down. Deer in the headlights a little. Yeah, bit. yeah. He gets Accuracy scared. is up tenfold on last year. Yeah, absolutely. But those His deep ball is beautiful as well. Yeah. He can launch it. Well, if you cast your mind back to our very first show when we previewed the Bills, um, you actually mentioned that he hadn't thrown a for more than 300 yards in a single game in his career. He's yet. done a crap ton of times this year. He's done a crap ton of times this year and look at the way they're flying along now mm. and that's a young man that's going to be a really good quarterback for them for a long time, yeah. I imagine. And he can't take the foot off the gas either because you've got the Dolphins who have just improved as well. That's yeah, it. they can't afford to lose them because what are they, one win ahead of the Dolphins? Yeah, yeah one, one win ahead, ahead of the Dolphins. Yeah. I wonder if they play each other in the rest of the year. They must. They've only played each other once. It seems year. funny to say out loud sometimes, but I feel like Buffalo and particularly Josh Allen <laughs> would be benefiting from having a team there you know, applying pressure. I Pushing them. Yeah, yeah. I think Miami. If, if, yeah, yeah, if they, yeah, yeah. If the Bills were in a coasting kind of situation, you know, two, three games clear on that division and not really any question, mm. I'd have a few more concerns about him. But I think as long as there's something coming underneath to well, kind I mean, of... you've still got to work out for the two, three, four, you know, seeding. Yeah, of course. But still, yeah, yeah I, 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 I get what you there's... mean. The difference between going playing at home and going on the road. Yeah, something along those lines mm. anyway. Might be a bit of a shot in the dark, but hey, I'm What are they at the moment? They're the three seed at the moment. Yeah. But what I couldn't believe as well is... <laughs> The Niners went into this game favourite. Yeah, bizarre. Oh, I don't get doesn't it. Doesn't make any sense. Nick not Mullins was their quarterback. At home. Yeah. Not playing it properly. Yeah, not playing properly at home. Big geography distance. Yeah. yeah. You're going from New York State all the way out mm. to uh, Arizona. Arizona. Mm. Glenn nearly said Santa Clara, but mm. going back to Arizona. <laughs> it's just I don't, I just couldn't see it. The Niners, we talk about how banged up they've been. I think they have the wood over the Rams this year. Yeah, mm, and yeah. I, think, I think that's why. I think they bought the betting the agencies hype. bought yeah. the hype of them betting the Rams. And, and it's like, oh, maybe the, they're actually good. No. It's just one of the teams they've got the wood over. Yeah. But consistently on, on the year, if you take that, the Niners are what, five and seven? Oh, they're a three-win team if you get rid of those They're games. three and seven yeah. if you take those two Rams losses <laughs> yeah. out, which Wins. is probably where they're realistically at. Yeah. 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 I mean, they've been cut up, you know, five ways. It's yeah. ridiculous. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They've been sold to pieces mm. of the Look, watch out for them next year. That's mm. what I'm saying on that one. The Ravens and Cowboys will be Still playing to t- tomorrow morning uh, local time. Obviously, we're filming here on a Tuesday night. So Anyone I'm- want to change their tip? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm hanging tough with Everyone's the Ravens. Everyone's going to the Ravens. Tennessee can't win three games in a week. No, that, I would fall over. <laughs> oh. um, so to recap the night... Hat. <laughs> recapping the night, Nazi grabbed eight tips this week. Slammer grabbed nine, and I was just on a lousy seven. The, I'll um, take the Cowboys. Stop it. Okay. Yeah. Schnazzy's on 131. Slammer is on 126. Obviously, he's trying to make up one more on him there. And I'm on 114. Um, the guarantee obviously went down. Two legs failing there and two got home on a miracle. But we'll be back better than ever for the previous show coming up yeah. shortly. Um, yeah, I'm flat about it, Blas. As always with the socials, big thanks to the Jersey Cartel and all the best, mate, with your surgery coming up. Uh, we've got Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Slim Slam and the Bandwagon fan. Um, Twitter SSBF podcast. I'm going to try and dodge a couple of darts here. Um, doesn't happen. Unlike often. you, doesn't happen. <laughs> doesn't happen often. Doesn't happen often. Um, anywhere you get your podcast, Slim Slam and the Bandwagon fan, give us a follow, give us a like there, and obviously on YouTube if you're watching us right now, subscribes and likes will help the channel grow from there. Slam. With all that said, mate, maybe sign us out for the night and hey. yeah, enjoy. Sorry, I was halfway through. No, He's okay. been Slim. I've been Slam. That's the Bandwagon fan. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>